Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about milestone rewards or season rewards inside of FIBA 22 because this is something brand new that is going to be happening in the next about 24 hours or so with season one ending inside of FIFA Ultimate Team. And a lot of people are asking me, are these brand new milestone and season rewards that a lot of people are going to be getting at the Division Rivals Rewards time frame tomorrow? crash the market is this packs supply gonna crash the market now there's a lot of packs that are going to be released and i want to talk about that and even explain what milestone rewards are because we haven't had them yet this year but in my opinion it's not really going to cause a huge market crash because a lot of these packs are untradeable and i want to talk facts about how these rewards could look now also ea has been talking about this right they posted a tweet yesterday with some information about season two i'm going to go over that really quickly and talk about what happened yesterday on the market as well, because we are coming into a Wednesday on FIFA Ultimate Team where we usually see the market drop. But yesterday we had a pretty sizable market drop on a specific area of cards. The 81 to 86 preview pack was finally released. And actually a lot of people got really good stuff from this pack. There was a lot of supply yesterday on any card that was a 81 to 86 rated gold or promo pack or inform. Uh, so rule breakers, informs, and golds, 81 to 86, got supplied a lot yesterday, rare players. Uh, so that was very interesting and that caused a lot of the market to drop. And I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to watch those prices into today on Wednesday as well, as Wednesday is usually our sell-off day once we hit 6 p.m. So we'll talk about that as well. And potential Team of the Week 8 coming today with a Neymar Team of the Week card. Now, that would be pretty spicy. Anyways, let's talk about these milestone rewards. This is what everybody's just talking about right now because this is brand new. This is the first time ever we're going to have these season rewards. And basically what this is, is you get rewards every week for to play in division rivals, right? Like right now, I've got my reward upgrade. I'm inside division three. I'm not quite rank one. So at the moment, div three, rank two, I'm going to get these rewards, right? One of these three options like normal. That's normal division rivals rewards that we get every week. But this week, since the season is also ending, your progress and how you've progressed throughout the season basically ends and the rewards get paid out if you actually click into this uh this right here you see your progress within your division on what rewards you are going to get right so as you can see i've kind of progressed i hit 20 games played i hit 50 games played now i haven't hit 90 games played so i haven't reached milestone three but a lot of people are wondering are these packs that we will get from these milestone rewards are they going to crash the market and in my opinion they are not because here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? Tomorrow with your division rivals rewards, you're all going to be getting the normal rewards and then these on top of that. But the thing with these season rewards is they're all untradeable. So since I'm in division three, I'm going to get, since I completed milestone one and milestone two, I'm going to get this milestone one reward and I'm going to get the milestone two reward. Now, if I would have completed milestone three, I would get all three of these. But since I got the first two completed, I'm going to get a rare electrums pack and a rare mega pack. Now it's only inside of division three because that's my current division. Now let's say if I was in division four, I would be getting you know these rewards, right? You can actually preview the rewards for all the div different divisions and how it's gonna pay out tomorrow. If you're in the elite division, you're gonna get yourself a, for 20 wins, a prime gold players pack, for 50 wins, a rare mega and a prime electrum. And if you got 90 games played or not even wins, just games played, you get two 100K packs and a rare mega. Now here's the thing. The way this looks, it looks like it's a progression system inside of each division. As you can see in the top there, it says division three. So the way that I'm reading this is since I've completed milestone one, I'm going to get this rare electrum players pack. And since I've completed milestone two, I'm going to get this rare mega play, rare mega pack. Um, some people are interpreting this as I only get the rare mega pack since I've surpassed this. It's kind of like a reward and then a reward upgrade. I really don't know if it's just going to be one pack for each milestone reward or if they're going to stack inside of the division. But one thing I do know that is not for sure is I am not going to get all of these rewards from division 10 all the way up to division three, right? I know I've gone from division 10 to division three, but I'm not getting all of those rewards as I've gone up through the season. That's just not how it works. I'm only going to be getting the current division that I'm in those rewards. So I think that's the only caveat to today. I think this, the way that this looks, since, since it looks like a progression, right? I think I am going to get the rare electron pack 
and the rare mega pack. And if I would have gotten to rank th milestone three, I would have gotten two 100K packs. So I think that's how it works, right? I think that is how it works inside of here. Now, again, you only have one day, five hours. So if you're really close to one of these ranks and you want to get it done, you can. But that's basically how these rewards work. And it's brand new, right? So we're still figuring out, again, that little caveat there we're not entirely sure about. They haven't been super clear with it. Uh, since this is brand new, there's not a lot of information on it. But again, the biggest thing that is going to be affected on the market because of this is it's just going to be a lot of supply and it's probably going to be a lot of fodder. That's what's going to hit the market the most. So you think about those packs, they're all untradeable. Now, what's going to be in packs on Thursday at rewards time when those are open? Well, technically, the rule breakers who are in packs for another day, usually the second team of a promo ends on a Wednesday, but not this week. It actually ends on Thursday. So all the rule breakers from team two are going to be in packs at division rivals rewards this Thursday, tomorrow. So with D rivals and with the milestone rewards, yes, these guys are going to be supplied a little bit more. So probably their prices might drop a little bit, right? They would drop with rivals rewards normally as they would at any time if they were in packs, like Rule Breakers Team 1 dropped a little bit with Rivals Rewards um, and then went up afterwards. But I would kind of expect a similar scenario with these cards from Rule Breakers Team 2. They might just have a little bit bigger drops. I'm not expecting to see huge drops on these cards. What I more expect to see is SPC fodder, if I'm being completely honest. As you saw yesterday, the 81 to 86 pack dropped fodder prices a little bit. I think what's going to happen is people are going to be waiting to do that icon base icon upgrade if they haven't done it yet they're getting a lot of rewards on thursday so if fodder goes down tonight into the rewards time frame tomorrow i think what you'll see is you'll see fodder drop into rewards as people are maybe waiting for those rewards to do the sbc and then you'll see a nice rise on fodder like 87s and 88s those some some of those higher tier players people are going to pack 83s and 84s especially if you're getting 100k packs they're going to be some 83 84 85 and 86 rated players packed but people are going to have to go out and get some of these higher rated ones to finish off sbc so i would watch this part of the market um on that rivals rewards time frame i honestly don't think it's going to crash the game now though one argument is that it's going to put like for these rule breakers well people some people say yeah okay well somebody's going to pack phil foden that they already have tradable in their team or even for gold cards like somebody's going to pack a varan on tradable that they might already already have in their team tradable and there is a bit of an argument to that but i don't think that's just going to cause an absolute drop off uh, of crazy proportions on this market. It might cause like a normal rewards dip and then you see a bit of a rise. That's kind of how I feel like the rewards time frame on Thursday is gonna go. Um, and I, I just think it's gonna be like a normal Thursday to be completely honest. It's just gonna be a few more packs and people are gonna have fodder in their club again uh, after EA drained it all this week from SBCs and stuff like that. So that is how I feel like these rewards are going to impact the market the most. I really don't think that it's going to be a huge market crash and you're going to see a lot of players' prices drop. You're probably just going to see a small dip and then a rise as normally happens with those division rivals rewards. Now, again, since the new season is starting, this is brand new, right? So we'll have to see how this goes. But since the packs are untradeable, that's where I'm getting a lot of this thinking from. Uh, and it's basically just going to supply people's clubs with fodder and stuff. So that's how I see this. Now, again, I mentioned that EA tweeted about this and there's a couple things. They posted like a two minute video with Zaro and Dunin talking about some of the changes. Now, I just wanna give you a quick rundown of what they said in this video. So if you're starting like right now, I'm in division three. So tomorrow, when this thing updates, I'm gonna be set back to division five. The, um, if, you're, if you're qualifying for foot champions, you have to qualify before Rivals Rewards. And if you don't qualify before Rivals Rewards, then your progress will be reset. So like right now, I'm in the middle of qualifying uh, in, inside of, a, of the Foot Champions um, playoffs, right? And I played three games and I'm one and two, right? So I got to get some dubs. But um, if I was to leave this untouched before Rewards tomorrow, then I would have to claim my rewards and I would lose my progress, but I would get my qualification opportunity back. I'd be able to have all my games back. Uh, to play in playoffs, but technically what you could do is if you want to finesse this a little bit You could play uh, Qualification matches, but then not quite qualify right before division rivals rewards Then get your progress reset and just have to qualify again But you would get two sets of playoffs rewards if that makes sense So that's a little bit confusing, but 
the biggest change in my opinion is that you're going to have to get 2000 skill points um usually it's 1500 right it's 1500 skill points to get into the champions playoffs now it's going to be 2000 so they're making that a little bit harder and they also said that they're increasing the milestone rewards for season two they're going to be better than they were for season one so that's just my opinion on how i think the market's going to be affected um on thursday tomorrow i'm honestly what we're going to talk about and look at on the market even after tomorrow on wednesday probably in tomorrow night's video is just the market in general and how i probably would expect to see a decent rise on thursday after that rewards time frame on fodder um, and probably on just the meta gold card market uh, especially if we don't have a loading screen. If we do have a loading screen, there might be some different scenarios that we see in there. But a lot of times you see cards get pretty low on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then we have a nice market rise on Thursdays, especially in the meta gold department. Now, that's another thing that I want to talk about. Moving on, moving on to actually what happened yesterday. A lot of the market is down because of that preview pack that we just talked about. And I want to show you some meta golds that have actually dropped a lot in price over the past like 12 hours or so. Take a look at Kempembe, 31,000 coins after yesterday morning being 39K. Literally, this crash has been caused by that 81 to 86 preview pack that they dropped in the store. Now, we had knew this was in the code, right? This wasn't a surprise like the 50K pack. We were just waiting for them to put it out, and they did. And a lot of people packed these pretty solid cards in these packs, right? Take a look at Varan, an 86 rated card. It was all about rating today. That was the crazy part, right? Varan was 178K, dropped down to the 160s. And the supply on these preview packs was so much that these card prices have kept dropping down into the night tonight, Tuesday night into Wednesday. And as I'm looking at some of these prices, man, Hakimi, 74,000 coins. That's crazy. This guy was almost 90K. He was almost 90,000 coins. He's dropped down to 74K. That is kind of wild. Uh, Ferland Mendy was another one that's dropped off a bunch. 61,000 coins after he was like in the mid-70s. Uh, again, it only really hurt the part of the market that was below 86 rated. Informs were included in this. Vinny Jr. was like 380, I believe. He's now back up a little bit. But Vinny Jr. was like 370,000 coins. He actually went down in the 330s for a hot second. Now he's back up to 364. And the biggest hit on the market was these rule breakers. Rule breakers that were 86 and under. Bamba was like 130,000 coins. And he dropped down to under 100K in a very short time frame. And has kind of stayed low. Now, actually, I've picked up a few Klostermans because I think this card is a bit too cheap. I stagged myself some Klostermans right around 135,000 coins. I don't know if I got the absolute lowest in this card. Um, but I just saw his percentage drop, right? Klosterman was 170K. He was 170,000 coins before that 81 to 86 pack yesterday. So I do hope that there's a bit of a rise on this card just because I think that, um, you know, Goretzka is in team of the week today. Potentially, that's a nice green link to this Klosterman card. And this card is only in packs since Saturday. So he's got one less day in packs than the rest of the team. But there's a ton of drops all across the entire market on these cards that were below 86 rated and again i do think you'll see a little bit of a rise in these cards today but i wouldn't try to keep hold on to them for long because normally again what we see wow alfonso davies is really cheap normally what we see on wednesdays is after 6 p.m we see a market drop off not even because of supply right usually on wednesdays it's pretty quiet content wise but what we see is everybody start to sell cards from their team as we get towards division rivals rewards and especially today especially today as we have those season and milestone rewards coming for us i do think that you will see a bit of a drop off on the market now as you can see i was watching a lot of cards tried flipping some icons i've got some coins on the transfer list in icons that i'm attempting to flip this evening i have some baby roberto carlos in the very low 500s there's a couple traders, but don't don't be a trader like this, man. This guy, this is a trader right here that bought this Roberto Carlos and listed him overnight at 549,000 coins. If you look at his graph, he was like 560 yesterday. Um, he's literally causing Roberto Carlos's price to stay low and not rise because he listed that card overnight at 550. I'm actually kind of mad at this guy because now instead of Roberto Carlos kind of rising up and that 549 getting bought if it was on the hour, uh, now Roberto Cross is 528,000 coins, right? So kind of take it that guy to be completely honest. Those overnight listings can really screw up a card's price in the market a lot more than you would think. Uh, but I still think I'm going to be able to get on those flips. And I think you might see again on some of these gold cards that are just stupid, stupid low. 
in the panic selling today after 6 p.m., just keep an eye on some of them, man, because these are really, really, really low. Like this Ferland Mendy at 61,000 coins, like that is really cheap. So keep an eye on some of these, whether you see a slight rise into the morning today on Tuesday, as people might decide these are pretty cheap. But most likely, as you see the prices dropping off a little bit after 6 p.m. today, again, just as people are... Um, expecting some supply and, and some people still believe that there's going to be a big market crash when those season rewards come out so people are going to start listing these cards up from their teams if they do expect a market crash that is one thing that i'll be watching out for today as well it's going to be an interesting day right we've had a couple of crazy days on the market and there's always market movements every single day on this game yesterday it seemed a bit less crazy than it was monday sunday and monday with the icon pack and stuff like that but there's still a lot of movements, right? A lot of the rule breakers dropped off and a lot of this market continues to stay down um, after that base icon SBC. And a lot of people are trying to craft it. Again, as you see fodder moving, and I really think that's gonna be one thing that happens on the market after rewards tomorrow on Thursday. Now, one last thing I wanna take a look at just briefly is talk about these rule breaker cards again, because some people are asking me, hey, are these good investments? And in my opinion, no. I'm staying away from these rule breakers from Team 2. The pack weight on these is higher than the road to the knockouts. And as we saw with rule breakers Team 1, how many cards from rule breakers Team 1 right now are higher than what they were at their lowest when they were in packs? I literally think there's like two cards. Onyeka is one of them. And I think, actually, you know what? Onyeka might be the only one. Rudiger was about the same price. Trent has dropped with panic selling. So a lot of these rule breakers didn't rise up from team one. I'm not gonna invest in the rule breakers from team two. I'm really not. If it's a buy for your team, then I understand that. I think your lowest time on these cards is probably gonna be Wednesday night into that rewards time frame, or maybe around the Thursday morning with rewards. Um, but I'm not gonna be holding on and investing these for a long-term hold to be completely honest, just because I feel like this team, although it does have some nice cards in it, it has been supplied so much. 81 to 86 preview packs, 50K preview packs. I don't wanna be a part of that, right? I think that's just too much supply. I don't trust those cards, especially as we get closer and closer to Black Friday. So we're gonna have to start entering that conversation. And also we're starting to wonder what's gonna happen on Friday if these cards go out of packs on Thursday instead of today, what's EA got up their sleeve for the new season uh, on FIFA this week. And also with this promo ending a day later, we're all really curious to see what happens there. So that's the video for today, boys. If you did enjoy, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.